coach. Oh. He's, he's no D-Led? Uh, no, he's not here. All right. Okay. All right, guys. <laughs> wow. Bye. 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 I'm just Bye. kidding. Bye. Just Bye. kidding. Bye. Cleveland connection. <laughs> All right. What we got? Um, yeah. So Dallas says today Randy Gregory is going to be out. When you hear that, A, what's your reaction and, and how sure. does that maybe change things? Yeah, I, I just came off a walkthrough. So we were, we were focusing on, you know, what we were doing offensively, um, going through the look. So, again, just reacting to the news now. Um, th what they've done a great job of uh, is put a lot of their guys in position to be successful. Uh, they're aggressive, fast defense. I don't expect that to change. Um, they do a great job of coaching, being physical, playing fast. Uh, it's going to be our job, regardless of who's out there, um, to play to our best ability fundamentally because that defense can come out and they can attack the football. What about, I mean, when a guy who's been very productive in the past rush this year who's not in the game? I mean, that has to at least shift things, even if it's just the preparation for your own line, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't tend to look at it that way. I mean, you can give us as an offense an example, right? Uh, if a guy is not out there for whatever reason or not playing, it seems like someone else will step up. It's a National Football League. Uh, there's great players that just need opportunity. Um, so regardless of who's out there, um, again, it goes back to us doing the best we can with what we're asked to do offensively, uh, fundamentally. And whoever's out there defensively for Dallas, I'm sure they're going to give great effort. Sure. you kind of seen him reinvent himself in a subtle way in the, what y'all are trying to do? Well, he's trying to do a scramble scat quarterback, first right. of all. <laughs> I mean, I know he doesn't want to take credit for his speed, but, I mean, at some point, the cat's out of the bag with this guy's ability to make people miss in space. Um, look, Matt, Matt's a competitor. Um, again, that's, there's different ways to look at where Matt is in his career. Um, I feel fortunate to work with him every day because of what he brings professionally, how he approaches the job. Um, and he goes out and what he does a great job of is he's great around his teammates. Uh, he's like a coach out there that sees it through his eyes, will go and talk to whoever, uh, regardless of status on the team. Um, but again, I broke a record with Matt. He, he's a true professional in every sense. And regardless of what we ask him to do, he tries to execute it to the best of his ability, which is awesome to see. Sure, that's a great question. I mean, when it comes to a quarterback like Matt, who, you know, again, his numbers speak for himself, his production speaks for himself, uh, he can make a lot of things work conceptually. Um, we obviously, you know, when we got here, we knew what he had done in the past. Um, similar things that, uh, that Coach Smith and I have done. But again, it also tailors to the personnel that you have, um, not just at the quarterback spot. And again, we're continuing to evolve. That, that is the one thing that excites me. I know the rest of our staff about coming to work is we're continuing to try to find ways to evolve to make the offense better uh, and make it our offense, the 2021 Falcons. So again, if it, it might fit one player, but not all those players. So we try to find a way to make it fit for everyone. Um, and that's, that's been the beauty of what we're trying to do offensively so far. I mean, you have to ask his parents on that. I'm sure it does. I mean, I'm sure his stats speak for himself in high school. But look, here's the one thing I will say, all joking aside, he's out there. He conditions hard. Uh, he takes pride in simple things as carrying out a fake. And he runs really – I've had young quarterbacks I've coached, and I've had older quarterbacks. Regardless of age, he works the hardest at it. So I'm not saying that's the only reason why he's able to still move around. But he takes a lot of pride in his physical condition and making sure that he's, he's on top of it. And again, I give, him, I give him a ton of credit for how he approaches his job. I think, you know, when you speak about the different personnels, um, it allows us to be flexible. 
Um, it also, you know, we think more importantly is everybody is involved. Um, different guys, when they see the game plan each week, they want to see who they are formationally, where they are personnel-wise. Um, I think that brings an energy to everybody within the offense um, to see that they could be potentially, just because they play a certain spot doesn't mean they can't run a certain route. Um, we want to give flexibility, and we want to make the defense understand that they have to really try to stop all different things, not just stuff that you know, that they see week in, week out. And it's, it's our job as coaches to continue to put guys in different spots, but also, you know, we're trying to stress the defense. You know, they have to see the different personnels. Um, some guys in spots that maybe aren't typically normal in the NFL. And, and again, we're still trying to be, you know, we're trying to do what's right by the player, but also, you know, make it our offense and, and have teams try to defend all different parts of the field for us. Really great player. I mean, they have, you know, you, you look at that defense, and again, where he is as a rookie, but then you look at the other players on defense. I mean, it, you know, you put the film on, and, you know, it's, it's a fast, physical, um, certain brand of defense that you can see why they've been successful this part of the season so far. Um, and he's just one of the pieces that you put on film, and again, he's near the quarterback, he's near the ball carrier, uh, he brings a ton of energy, just like other players in that defense. Um, not just in the front seven, but in the secondary. And, and again, you can see those guys love playing with each other. You can see they believe in what they're doing philosophically, which um, their coaches have done a great job of getting that buy-in because you can show up on film. And I think that's a credit to a, the, the coaches there. When you see what they want on film, well, there's the resume. And you can see it. They're physical. They're fast. They're flying around. Um, they cause issues for an offense. Um, it's going to be our job to go down there in a, in a great environment. Um, to go out there and try to execute. Is he the type of linebacker who thinks from what he's seen on film that can really maybe be a rare guy that can cover a center, can cover him well? Yeah, I, I, I want to put a limit on him. You know, he's, they have a bunch of different pieces on defense that um, provide flexibility, similar to what we try to do offensively. Um, he's just one of those guys, obviously athletically, um, that can do a lot of different things, and it's been a credit to their staff of what they've been able to do with him so far, and to him. <laughs> Look, we try to we try to get it cross our T's, dot our I's, and everything we can. But I'm not going to go into that. But I know they have some form of a history. Um, we're just going out there and trying to see what we have on film and go execute. So you haven't been bragging about <laughs> no about crushing Mike no. no, not to me. He has not. <laughs> not to me. He hasn't. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part of it. Oh, uh, Diggs. We were talking about Diggs mm -hmm. and him having a Sure. Yeah, he's another one of the, of the playmakers on defense. And, again, I, I'm not just saying this. You put the film on, there's a lot of them out there. Um, I, you know, again, he's been able to be around the ball. He does a great job of playing the football. Um, he's got great instincts. Uh, he understands it very well. You can tell, even though he's young, um, he's got an, a, you know, almost a veteran-type mentality of how he understands and reads routes. Um, I mean, he's got great awareness around the football, but that, that's to speak of the rest of that secondary. I've, you know, I've known um, Joe Witt for a long time, uh, who's over there, and uh, it's not surprising the defense secondary plays extremely well in what they asked them to do. Um, it's a credit, like I said, to Coach Quinn and everybody else over there for philosophically, you can just feel how that defense plays, and they play with a certain level of passion. I knew the CP question was coming. It, it, it's not a week without the CP question. No doubt. I go home and I get the CP question from my five-year-old. Um, you know, that's probably a better question for him. Like, I've been around him. Look, I've been around him for... Wait, wait, what did you guys say? Okay, and what did, what did Art say? Art said to ask CP. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, there you go. I mean, I don't think you know a better quote than that. I'm not going to try to interfere with that. Yeah. We're good there. I mean, look, I, I keep saying the same thing each week. Like, he's a really, really good football player. I love his passion. I love how he approaches the game. Um, just fortunate enough that he's here. I know that's not the answer you're looking for. I know. I get it through the mask. You're looking at me like, ah, Lee, come on. I get it. Are you concerned at all about the, the running game? 
Oh, look, I mean, like I said with the offense, like we're continuing to try to evolve. I mean, I've been a part of, I know Coach Smith, obviously, but I've been a part of rushing teams statistically that were the top two or three in the league. Um, they all come in different shapes and sizes, and that doesn't mean every week you're hitting 150 yards rushing. It also means it takes all 11, fundamentally, and coaches included. That's just not on the players. Us as coaches making sure we're putting those players in the best position. And then obviously the player is going out and doing it fundamentally. Um, no, to me, it's you continue to, to go out. You continue to preach the exact same message of fundamentals. It takes all 11. And again, it's what you believe. I don't think you change just based off a result here or there. I think players see through that from a coaching standpoint. We try to be consistent to who we are and what we believe. And again, I believe in those. I believe in everybody we put out there, specifically that offensive line and those backs. Is there, is there a point, though, where you start to be concerned about Mike Davis' stuff? No, to me, again, I, I look at Mike as a football player and, and his totality of what we ask him to do. I get he's responsible for running the football. He's also responsible for some of the protection things that we ask him to do, which, again, I get does not show up in the stat line. But there has been some huge impactful plays that Mike Davis has made in protection uh, that's really changed our ability to move the ball downfield that never will show up. Uh, and again, it's, if it's Mike, if it's CP, if it's Wayne, if it's Q, all those guys that we ask to run the football uh, at some point, I have faith in all of them. Um, and I think they're all very good football players. You go a Michigan question here? What do you got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt. No, Michigan, I thought uh, you were no, going no, with. No, 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 no. Uh, from what you've seen from Josh in practices, can he maybe get to the point where he's a starting quarterback again in the league? Well, I, I don't want to I don't want to put a projection or label on Josh in terms of that. I think what we asked Josh to do is go take every single rep as a scout team quarterback, which again I have complete understanding of that. I don't know what it's like to be a franchise quarterback. I do it know what it's like to read cards and throw in scout team. And I think what's hard for a backup quarterback in the National Football League that gets undervalued is he really has a dual mandate. He's got to, A, get himself ready to play without reps, and then, B, he's got to help the starter get ready. And so what we asked Josh to do in scout team is go out there and take every rep as if it is a game-like situation. That pocket's real. Don't act like you've got 10 seconds back there. Um, take the coaching. Josh has done a tremendous job off the field of learning the plan. He puts a lot of pride and effort into it, just like we ask all the quarterbacks to. And so where he's at, what we're asking him to do, um, we're obviously, he's where he needs to be. To project anything else is unfair to, to him, and I, I wouldn't do that. Is the arm count still, I mean, that was one of the big things. Right? Sure, I mean. Is the arm count still, he's going to see him anymore, you know? Like, yeah, I mean, the, the arms, I don't think guys, especially at his age, all of a sudden don't have it. I mean, you saw what you saw in college film, um, his limited time in the NFL in terms of playing. And again, in the practice field, you know, there's things that we're constantly always working on fundamentally. But yeah, can he still spin it? Yeah, the ball still comes out. But that's only part of the job. There's so much more. You know, that's the hard thing about evaluating quarterbacks, in my opinion. A lot of guys can throw the ball and pretty, and it looks unbelievable, specifically in shorts. But the reality is the game, when you play it, like I always, the pocket and what's actually a clean pocket and what's a dirty pocket. And the guys that can actually operate when the pocket's dirty, like to me, those are the difference makers of the quarterback spot. When the pocket's clean and you can two hitch and it's beautiful and everything else, I got you. I think that's the lowest bar to climb in the NFL is to operate from a clean pocket. The guys that can operate from a dirty pocket and make things happen in small areas and make plays without forcing it, I think that's the, that's the level of difference when you talk about quarterbacks. But everything else, yeah, everything we've asked them to do has been, has been what we've asked them. Yeah, I mean, to me, it were those were the wide receivers, what we've asked them to do each week. And I think what gets lost sometimes and that happens in the stat line is there's certain weeks where we ask these guys to do certain things that maybe doesn't involve always just being one in the progression. But their job is to maybe open up one in the progression. And again, I, that doesn't show up in the stat line. I understand that. But I, what the receivers have done and how they approach their job it's been one of the most professional groups and the most caring groups I've been around in terms of how they go about their business. 
And again, it's, it's awesome to see when they go out there and their energy. Watch when we score a touchdown. Watch those guys come off the sideline, even if it's not one of the receivers catching it. I mean, again, they're an, they're an energy professional group, um, and I appreciate those guys. Appreciate you guys. All right. <laughs>